welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have Noah Bethel, the Vice President of Product Development. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And Noah, another day, another dollar. Yes. Although we need two now, right? Because inflation is where it's at. Inflation is not helping us at all. I can barely afford my cafe mocolata. <laughs> I'm only allowed, I can only afford a cafe, mo and that's it. <laughs> yeah. It's not it's, it's a you partial know, drink. You need a colada to it's end on good. that. It's not good. <laughs> you need a mocolata. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have enough uh, change in my wallet. They say, oh no, 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 it's double the price now. Gosh darn it. Anyways, uh, uh, we've our cu our customers come through for us again and uh, brought us a great case study uh, and the importance of QA. We talk about quality assurance. One of the time. trifecta, right? One of the trifecta. Mm -hmm. So this uh, will go right in line with that. And uh, hopefully the audience, you'll get something out of this as well as we go through it. So, you know, why a baseline test can be so valuable. And we strive that. We say that all the time. We do. So this motor had spurious trips. Plant operator was able, so they, they play with it. Mm -hmm. Operations, it's kind of like a problem motor. You know what you need to do. Okay, it's spurious, restart it, go about your business. The workaround. Get, they have workarounds. Sometimes a lot of plants have different, a lot of workarounds uh, rather than getting to the deep of the problem. Um, they started to become progressively worse, and then the notice, the, the electrician noticed speed was changing. Mm. You know, what, what can cause speed to go down? And that's not a small change. That's a big change and so there's a variety of, of things we try to look at uh you know the most popular that we see in terms of industrial reliability is we we start to focus on the rotor health um you know and how that can affect the speed um it's obviously a torque change uh, possibly it could be a design flaw uh that could have made it improperly or rewound it improperly uh even operations can abuse a motor with excessive load Right, so all those could play a factor. So Absolutely. you don't really know exactly yet what's causing this, but you know, we at PDMA we've seen a lot of this data. We tend to go first towards rotor, but there are a lot of things that can create this type of event. So now we're attempting to solve the problem. The millwrights, of course, what are they going to say? Must be the pump. Must be the motor, right? It's the <laughs> They're never going to call it. It's the always the fifteen-foot rule of troubleshooting. If, it's, if there's uh, a wire, not my with problem. <laughs> Sorry, it's got an electrical wire, like you say. That's if right. it's within fifteen feet, not going to happen. <laughs> uh, so, of course, it's not a pump issue. So, the next step is, you know, we got to do change. Look at the electrical side, and now this is interesting, right? So, they just decided to change the soft start in this day and age. Mm. Is that? That may not be an acceptable approach. We can't necessarily Easter egg anymore. No, with the supply chain the way it is, we've talked about this. We've written articles about it. Uh, you can't just uh, throw a resource away or an asset away like that. And and here's the reality is, and you and I have uh, talked about this many times, is that a lot of times the starter is the easy yeah. approach to trying to solve a problem. Um, it's harder to replace the motor. It takes a lot more resource and man hours. It's it's even harder to replace the cables. Yeah. So So a soft start is sort of like the easy, let's try this first. It is, but it may not be the right approach if you don't have another soft start. We go through this all the time with us. We're always having supply chain crunch issues or extended uh, supply delivery dates. Um, it's becoming very difficult out there. So we may not be able to just throw a new soft start at Absolutely it. not. So you really want to tune into what the potential problem is. So the, uh, the question was asked, have we ever performed uh, PDMA on this motor. A good and, question. And actually, they did, but here's the here's the funny thing is they did it back in 2004. Wow, that doesn't qualify as a trend. No, but it's excellent to have because we always say when you get the motor, first thing you should do as a baseline, do a rick on it. Right, because without that baseline, that B test may can be considered normal. It's so critical to have that, and thank goodness they got it back in 2004. Yes, because now it really starts to tune in to where we should look for this uh, potential fault zone. And we see, right, big indicator here, we always say when you're looking at rotor problems, look at average inductance. What is it doing over time? And this shows a pretty significant change. That's an over a 20% increase. We definitely look at that. Even the eccentricity going from you know false to true. We've got a couple indications here that are jumping out at us. Right, so there's two indicators on this, kind of our, our rotor influence check 
results page here and then we actually performed a rotor influence check this is what it looked like when we first got the motor that's pretty much textbook yeah. looking good yeah looking pretty good there no real issues to speak of and then in uh, a few years later mm -mm -mm. doesn't even look the same 17 years later unbelievable if yeah. for us it's a few right because once you hit 50s everything it goes so fast <laughs> it goes so fast so you want to <laughs> stay uh 17 years is nothing man no that's, that, that's no big deal but in the yeah. life of a motor think about the number of yeah. starts that motor went through yeah. in 17 years big change though right huge change there's a couple things that jump out there's a uh, the sinusoidal effect is still there but there's there's separation in the phases it's extremely erratic uh, we've got a lot of, of issues in the magnetic field that's re that's stored on that rotor. Yeah, and you can see the inductance changed as well. We're up in the sixes and the sevens, where before we were in the fours and exactly. the fives. Exactly, exactly. So the, obviously their problem was pointing towards a rotor, and then they pulled it, and this is what they found. Wow. Now, there is a lot of damage there, not just uh, bar degradation, but it, look at the heating. And you, we talked about going into an eccentricity indication. It makes sense. When you have this kind of non-symmetrical heating of the rotor, it's going to bow. It's going to present an air gap eccentricity indication. This is a severe, a very advanced, severe problem. Now, we were reviewing this a little bit earlier, and you made a good comment as, thankfully, this was a kind of a closed rotor design, spun cast aluminum, whatever those bars were, but it wore, they weren't open bar design. Right. This is a, the closed bar design, meaning the bars are actually under the laminations, uh, the steel laminations of the rotor, even though they were de degrading and, and you can see the high resistance connections and literally the material is, is, is almost melting away. They're not open to the point where the bar is going to fly out into the stator windings. So, so this motor, that 17 years, if this was an open bar design, it wouldn't have lasted 17 years. But that heat could cause some problem because the stator is relatively close to the rotor upon it when it's operating, obviously. Uh, so that heat could be transport or transported into the stator. I would have an elevated yeah. concern over the stator health and take a very deep look at that to make sure that it has not been degraded over these 17 years. Well, Noah, that brings us to the end of this case study. And as always, we appreciate uh, your attendance in this and listening. And thank you for your input, Noah. And, and we hope that you take a little bit uh, out of this presentation today to make yourself a little bit easier tomorrow. Until then, we'll talk to you again soon. And you guys have a safe day. Thank you.